Today I'm going to show you how to create a simple DIY light activated sound device with an MP3 module I bought from Amazon. My original video using this MP3 player module is about three years old. Well someone saw it and reached out and said how can I implement this into a talking cookie jar. So we're going to make it light activated so when you take the lid off the cookie jar you're going to hear an mp3 file whether it's a song or someone talking. I'm going to show you exactly what you need for the project, how to put it together, the connections. It's going to be super easy. Let's begin. Here are the items I'll be using in the video today. I'll be using two jumper wires, the male to male jumper wires. I'll be using the mp3 player module I got from Amazon. I'll also be using a breadboard power supply and I'll be using a half size breadboard and on that half size breadboard I have three components and you can see them a little bit better now. I've got the S8050 NPN transistor, I've got a photoresistor, and a 220 ohm resistor. I'll be using those in my circuit. And these two are optional. This is a, an optional way to um, power your, your circuit. This is a AA battery pack with space for three batteries which should work fine for this circuit and also a mini breadboard. Now if I wasn't going to use the breadboard power supply I honestly wouldn't use the half size breadboard. I would just use a mini breadboard. You can mount it right here on the lid of your battery pack and you also have some room for the uh, mp3 player right here. Switch your battery on. You got your circuit on. You leave it and it's very compact. You just figure out a way to mount your speaker on here. So that is an option as well. And if you missed any of this, here is a list of everything I just mentioned and I'll also add the Amazon link in the description of the video so check that out as well. Here's the transistor we'll be using and you may be wondering what is a transistor or at least what is the role of this transistor in our circuit. A transistor is a semiconductor device and it's used to amplify or switch electronic signals and electrical power and it's a very important component in many of the items that you have in your house right now. As we scroll down to the S8050 NPN transistor uh, features and specifications, we can see exactly why it's a good choice for this project. This transistor is designed to amplify low power signals and it is suitable and can handle base emitter voltages of up to 5 volts. It can also handle continuous collector current of 700 milliamps, which is more than sufficient for our signal amplification. And the TO92 package is compact and easy to work with in most DOI projects. Now this is the photoresistor and you may be wondering what is a photoresistor or at least what is the role of this photoresistor in our circuit. A photoresistor is a type of resistor whose resistance changes based on the amount of light it's exposed to and it's often used to indicate the presence or absence of light or to measure the light intensity. In general the resistance of a photoresistor decreases when it's exposed to more light and increases in dark conditions. As it pertains to our circuit, the photoresistor is used in conjunction with a fixed resistor to form a voltage divider, and this setup creates a variable voltage output that changes with the light intensity. When the lid of the cookie jar is removed, the photoresistor is exposed to light and its resistance drops. This change is sensed by the circuit, leading to activation of the MP3 player. When the lid is placed back on, reducing the light, the resistance of the photoresistor increases, turning the transistor off and stopping the playback. Well, let's go ahead and set up our circuit. Now when we set up our circuit, we're going to make sure that the flat side of the transistor is facing us, just like that. And that means that the pins from left to right are emitter, base, and collector. Collector is on the far right, emitter is on the far left, and base in the middle. But before we do that, we're going to take this out and put everything in place, or at least most things, in place first. So we know that our emitter needs to be connected to ground, so let's do that. Connect this jumper to ground and then our base is going to be connected to the photoresistor and the middle one is our base so let's go ahead and right next to the red one let's put that there for the base uh, this white wire here from the mp3 player module goes into the collector which would be the third column here so let's go ahead and put this resistor in place just like you see here 
Next thing we'll do is uh, put our photoresistor in place here. Now you want one leg of the photoresistor to go in the positive rail, our 5 volt rail, and then the other one to go right next to the wire coming from the base, just like you see there. Next thing we're going to do is add our fixed resistor. Now one leg of the fixed resistor will go to ground and the other one will go on the other side of the wire coming from the base. Stretch it apart a little bit. This one goes to ground. It can go anywhere in ground. May have to stretch it a little further. That is perfectly fine just like that. The next thing we want to do is connect this white wire. Well, it's not white for you. I've, I think I've replaced it. But it's going to be the PL, the uh, PL wire here on the back. It used to be the button. That is the wire that we are going to connect to the third pin of the the transistor which is our collector. We'll just collect it right there, or put it right there. All right, and then these two, the red and black wires, they are the ground and the VCC or the five volt. And then this is a uh, ground wire from the button. We're just gonna let it hang out. It's not gonna do anything, all right. Now I'm going to attach my breadboard power supply. And we're not going to worry about that right now. So that's what it looks like. It's pretty simple. Here's a diagram in case you missed any of that. And don't forget to select 5 volts on your power supply. Alright, this is what we have so far. Let's go ahead and connect our battery. volts into here make sure you have the 5 volt uh, jumper it's, uh, selected here this is 5 3 or off put it on 5 you'll notice that I needed to tilt that just a little bit to get a louder sound when considering the reflection of sound waves Sound waves emanating from the back of the speaker's driver can reflect off surfaces behind it, and it is important to have a smooth surface that can provide more predictable and controlled reflection. You don't want to mount this over rough or irregular surfaces that can cause diffraction, scattering sound waves, and potentially causing distortions and unwanted acoustic effects. Play around with it and you'll see what I mean. When you don't have a 3D printer available, you become resourceful, and as it turns out, these Legos do a pretty good job at amplifying the sound that comes from this speaker. So we're going to go ahead and go with that. I'm going to glue them together right here. I can easily pull them apart. I'm also going to glue this right to the breadboard here. And uh, this should be fine for what we're doing today. If you want the best sound for your speaker, I would recommend 3D printing an enclosure or doing a Google search for 8 ohm speaker enclosures. Just make sure that the enclosure is the right size for your speaker. Well, here's my talking cookie jar. Who's out there? It's actually pretty loud. I used Audacity to boost the volume after I recorded it. Who's out there? Oh, it's you. Well, the cookies are all gone. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Hopefully it was helpful in some way. If it was, be sure to like the video and consider subscribing if you like videos like this. Share it with someone and I'll see you again soon.